Hi, welcome in. I'm happy you're here. Uh, we are reading chapter two in the in the story. It's called this book is the story. I have it right here for you, and um, I'm going to have the book over here reading it. Chapter two. Now I'm on page twenty four, and um, picking up here. It. Jacob looked up, and there was Esau coming with his four hundred men. So he divided the children among Leah. Rachel and the two female servants. He put the female servants and their children in front, Leah and her children next, and Rachel and Joseph in the rear. He himself want, went on ahead and bowed down to the ground seven times as he approached his brother. But Esau ran to meet Jacob and embraced him. He threw his arms around his neck and kissed him, and they wept. Then Esau looked up and saw the women and children. Who are these with you? He asked. Jacob answered, They are the children God has graciously given your servant. Then the female servants and their children approached and bowed down. Next, Leah and her children came and bowed down. Last of all came Joseph and Rachel, and they too bowed down. Esau asked, What's the meaning of all these flocks and herds I met? To find favor in your eyes, my lord, he said. But Esau said, I already have plenty, my brother. Keep what you have for yourself. No, please, said Jacob, if I have found favor in your eyes, accept this gift from me, for to see your face is like seeing the face of God. Now that you have received me favorably, please accept the present that was brought to you. For God has been gracious to me, and I have all I need. And because Jacob insisted, Esau accepted it. Then Esau said, Let us be on our way. I'll accompany you. Then God said to Jacob, Go up to Bethel and settle there and build an altar there to God, who appeared to you when you were fleeing from your brother Esau. So Jacob said to his household and to all who were with him, Get rid of the foreign gods you have with you and purify yourselves and change your clothes. Then come, let us go up to Bethel, where I will build an altar to God, who answered me in the day of my distress, and who has been with me wherever I have gone. So they gave Jacob all the foreign gods they had, and the rings in their ears, and Jacob buried them under the oak at Shechem. Then they set out, and the terror of God fell on the towns all around them, so that no one pursued them. Jacob and all the people with him came to Luz, that is Bethel in the land of Canaan, where he built an altar and he called the place El Bethel because it was there that God revealed himself to him when he was fleeing from his brother. After Jacob returned from Paddan Aram, God appeared to him again and blessed him. God said to him, your name is Jacob, but you will no longer be called Jacob. Your name will be Israel. So he named him Israel. And God said to him, I am God Almighty, be fruitful and increase in number. A nation and a community of nations will come from you, and kings will be among your descendants. The land I gave to Abraham and Isaac I also give to you, and I will give this land to your descendants after you. Then they moved on from Bethel. While they were still, while they were still some distance from Ephrath, Rachel began to give birth and had great difficulty. And as she was having great difficulty in childbirth, the midwife said to her, Don't despair, for you have another son. As she breathed her last, for she was dying, she named her son Ben-Onai, but his father named him Benjamin. So Rachel died and was buried on the way to Ephrath, that is Bethlehem. While Israel was living in that religion, Reuben went in and slept with his father's concubine, Bilhah, and Israel heard of it. Jacob came home to his father Isaac in Mamre, near Kiriath Arba, that is Hebron, where Abraham and Isaac had stayed. Isaac, Isaac lived 180 years. Then he breathed his last and, and died and was gathered to his people, old and full of years, and his sons Esau and Jacob buried him. 
God's story of promise and prosperity moves from Jacob to his son, Joseph. Of Jacob's 12 sons, Joseph was clearly Jacob's favorite, leading the rest of Jacob's boys to resent their younger brother. Jacob only heightened the family stress when he gave a beautiful coat to Joseph, and Joseph didn't help matters when he twice told his older brothers that he had a dream that they would someday bow to him. Finally, the brothers had heard enough from their arrogant little brother. They hatched a conspiracy. For 17-year-old Joseph, it would be a very bad day indeed. Now, that's the end of chapter two. Let's look at the uh, last page, second to the last page. They have a, a, a diagram here, and it says Jacob. These were the sons of Jacob who were born to him in Pad and Aram. The sons of Rachel, Joseph and Benjamin. The sons of Leah, Issachar and Zebulun. That's the sons of Leah, Issachar and Zebulun the sons of Leah's servant, Zilpah, Gad, and Asher, the sons of Rachel's servant, Bilhah, Dan, and Naphtali, the sons of Leah, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Reuben, the firstborn. Okay, so that was the order of when Jacob had his sons, because see, those were the uh, first ones. So, Anyways, you'll see if you decide to get the book on page 26. That's the diagram. So there we have it. Okay, well, I'll see you another day, and I'll bring you chapter 3. Well, have a great day. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.